Trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know that saith the Lord. Second him in your leaflet. It is so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word. Just to know the same the Lord Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him How I prove Him more and more Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus Oh, for grace to trust Him more Oh, how sweet to trust Him Oh, for grace, 
Joy when the work is done. Joy when the reapers gather home. Bring in the sheaves at set of sun to the new Jerusalem. Joy, joy, joy. There'll be joy by and by. song service 428 there is a land that is fairer than they and by faith we can see it afar for the father waits over the way to prepare all of us a dwelling place there hallelujah there's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar, for the Father waits over the way to prepare us a dwelling place there, in the sweetest by and by, we shall meet on the beautiful shore, in the We shall see on that beautiful shore the melodious songs of the blessed, and the spirit shall sorrow no more. Not a sign for the blessings of rest in the sweet, in the sweet, sweet. By and by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweetest sweet, by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful 
Hallelujah. I invite us to stand. And shall we all stand? The pallbearers will ask you to go by the casket as we will up the casket. And we will do him 216, 212, sorry, it is almost time for the Lord to come. So the pallbearers, those willing in the casket. Hallelujah. 202, it is almost time for the Lord to come. Hallelujah. It's almost time for the Lord to come. I let the people sing. The stars of heaven are growing dim. It must be the breaking of the day. Oh, it must be the breaking of the day. Look on your leaflet and where you see Brother St. Math is unable to be here with us this afternoon. Nevertheless, I will substitute on his behalf. My name is Teresa Jules. In a situation like that, I cannot see myself welcoming you. When our friends are moaning, crying, but what I can do on behalf of the family, we are happy that you are here this afternoon. The Alfred family is glad. Wilfred family, they are glad that you have turned out in large numbers to support them. And we on the stage, we are happy to have you. Again, merci pour venir pour sa support ses familles. Mais comme je dis, dans une situation comme ça, il est pour moi ça, welcome. 
but you can open Sanadia. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our continuation song this afternoon will be song number 34. Wake the song. Number 34 in your leaflet. Praise the Lord. Wake the song of joy and gladness. Yes. Shall we stand as we do this hymn? Wake the song of joy and gladness. It is in your leaflet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wake the song of joy and gladness. In the bring. Gracious and loving Father, we have come by with warm hearts, Father. We've come by, Lord Jesus, to thank you, to praise you. Father, you are God and there is none like thee. Dear Master, this afternoon we have come to celebrate the life of Mr. Joseph. We ask in your name that... You may bless the family. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit may restore them and remind them, Lord Jesus, that you have promised them peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, I pray, Lord God, that as we mingle here a while, that your heavenly angels may speak to us that are alive and well. Father, I also pray for our pastor who's about to speak to your people. I pray, Lord God, that you may bless him. I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit may speak through him 
and that your people will leave here with a message. One that will remind them, Lord Jesus, that you are loving and that you care for them. So once again, Lord Jesus, we praise you and we ask, Lord God, that you may continue to be with us as we mingle here with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. We will call on um, Claudette Wilfred to do our eulogy now. After the eulogy, we will call on right away Mildred Joseph to do the scripture reading. So the eulogy and then Mildred Joseph to do the scripture reading. Good afternoon, everyone. Joseph Wilfred, better known as Finiste, Boiler, Paupe, Tonton, Pap, and Coxper, which was a Barbadian rum he was named after because he claimed it was his favorite. He was born on the 17th of February to Philomen and Azilta Wilfred and Philip Finiste. Toto was the sixth of his mother's eight children but the first of his parents' children together. He also had one sister and two brothers by his father. Finister grew up with his four sisters, Antonia, Nora, Flora, Susanna, and brother Eutis. Some of them recall him catching Sylvester's chickens, which used to be roaming in the yard to cook. And while he waited, he would be singing away while beating his taboo. This was his favorite instrument. He always had a song to sing throughout the night because what better to do when there was no electricity? Everyone used to join in dancing around him. He had two children who were given to him by two different women from Castries, Alces, who is now deceased, and Curtis, who is also deceased. They lived with him for a while until he left them with his mother and went to Barbados to live with his brother, Eutis, for about five years. Upon his return, his siblings could hardly recognize him because he came back with a Bajan appearance. He was very, very skinny, what we would call Meg, with big hair and bell-bottom pants. As soon as he arrived, he asked in Patwa, Beth Kimunkila, Tiwesa, right now, right now, right now. When he was asked why his hair was so big, his response was, Your baba kite babad. Ek pashi ve mwe, ikai gade pukupi. Mwe te ni pupwen ling. When he was asked where is his luggage, he said, Plain la pate ni le pusa. Yo di mwe yokai vwe iba mwe plita. However, he was carrying one cucumber. Pap lived with his mother upon his return to St. Lucia in Lakai. By then, his siblings had their own homes. He worked at Louvet Estate Forestry. Every time he was out of a job, he used to make brooms using bamboo, coconut sticks, tin, and wire. This was his trade he learned in Barbados, and he used to sell it for persons in the community. His bamboo broom was said to be better and stronger than the traditional Latin year brooms we all know. He also made coals which he would sell. At one point, he worked with some nuns in Kubari and even went to live with them. When mama died, when mom died, sorry, when mom died, he came back and stayed in the house Nora had made for her in the yard. After she was buried, he frequent between Kubari and Debawa. He was known for not staying in one place. Due to cancer in his foot, his limb had to be cut, amputated, above the knee, and he was left on crutches, which did not stop him from moving all over the place. He stayed with Nora, and when he was cured, he left and stayed in Fomaso, where he did odd jobs on his butt and even climbed trees. Thank you. Okay, our scripture reading, 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 20. 
but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom of God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power, for he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And verse 26 says, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So at this moment, we are getting ready for the message by Pastor Alfred Joseph. Pastor Joseph is what um, in the St. Lucia mission, we call him the ministerial secretary. What that means is that he's the pastor of the pastors. Right? Basically, that's what that means. He's going to do the message um, today, but before he does so, we will call on Brittany to do a special song. And then after Brittany, 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 okay? After Brittany, the next voice you are going to hear will be that of Pastor Joseph. Does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Yeah. Cause here on earth 
it feels like everything good is missing since you left and here on earth everything's different there's an emptiness oh i i hope you dance in the sky and i hope you're singing in the angels choir i hope the angels know what they have i'll bet it's a nice up in heaven since you arrived since you arrived up in heaven are your days filled with love and life is there music? Is there art and invention? Tell me, are you happy? Or are you more alive? Cause here on earth, it feels like everything good is missing since you left. And here on earth, Everything's different. There's an emptiness. Oh, I, I hope you're dancing in the sky. And I hope you're singing in the angels' choir. And I hope the angels know what they have. I'll bet it's a nice up in heaven since you arrived, since you arrived. I hope you dancing in the sky and I hope you're singing in the angels choir and I hope the angels know what they have I'll bet it's a nice up in heaven since you arrived tell me right They say this. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. We gathered today in the presence of the Lord to eulogize our dear brother Joseph Wilfred. And our prayer today is that God will Comfort those who mourn. And we know that death signifies the end of a life on this side of eternity. But for the Christians who know the Lord, our belief is death is just but a pause between here and eternity. For the Bible clearly teaches us that our Lord will return. Amen. And when he comes, 
the dead in Christ shall be raised. And Jesus has promised all of us salvation through his blood as long as we accept him as our Lord and our Savior. And so while you mourn today, Paul says that our hope is in Jesus. Our strength is in Jesus. Our courage is in Jesus. And we just need to rely on him. And God will see you through. Just before we open our Bibles um, and get to the word, I'll invite us to remain seated. And I ask the choristers to join and lead us in the singing of the hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear, what a privilege to carry. Everything, everything, everything to God in prayer. We ask our choristers, just come and join us. What a friend we have in Jesus All our sins and griefs to bear What a privilege to carry Everything Everything to God in come to you because in a time like this, we need you to be our refuge. And we pray, Lord, as we turn our attention to you, to the word, grant us a message and may the peace of God that pass it all understanding yes. abide with us all today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a disclaimer before I begin to speak and read from John chapter 14. Just a disclaimer. Funeral services are about the dead, but not for the dead. 
I want to say that again. Funeral services is about the dead. Because we are eulogizing him. But it is not for the dead. Because he who sleeps is asleep. And so because it's for us, I guarantee you today that based on our knowledge of scripture and understanding of the state of the dead that I'm not going to be speaking to Joseph today. No. If I do, I'd be very foolish because the very Bible from which I read says the dead knows not anything. Yeah. In the day that someone dies, they taught perish yeah. and they sleep. And so I'm going to be talking to you this afternoon and not to Joseph. In the book of John chapter 14, and I'm going to just be about 20 minutes. In the book of John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, is recorded what is said to be the promise of all promises. The greatest promise the brightest promise yeah. that God has left firstly for his disciples and by extension to the rest of us. Yeah. And this is one of the most known Bible verses in scripture among Christendom. Let not your hearts be troubled, says Jesus. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, says Jesus, I would have said so to you. I go, he says, to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, Jesus says, I will come again. And I'm not just going to come, but I'm coming and my purpose for coming is to receive you unto myself. Yeah. And then I'm going to take you to where I'm coming from. Yeah. That's heaven at last. Yeah. And where I go, verse 4 says, I you know, and the way you know, Father in heaven, speak to us through your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After three and a half years of fellowshipping with his disciples, Jesus knew well that his time of parting was near. That in a little while, he was going to be arrested by the Romans. Betrayed by one of his own disciples. He knew well that in a little while they're going to conduct a mock trial for him. That they're going to accuse him of all kinds of stuff that he did not do. He knew well that in a little while they are going to scourge him. In a little while they are going to put him upon a cross. In a little while, he's going to be in a tomb. He knew while, uh, that in a little while, he would not be with those disciples anymore. Yeah. He understood also that parting brings pain. Yeah. And these disciples had been with him for three and a half years. And as you read the gospel, they, they spent quality time together. Yeah. They ministered together. They were with him when they fed the multitude. I, I, I'm, I'm with the 
five loaves, bar- barley loaves and two fishes and multiplied and, and fed over 5,000 men. They were with him when uh, the sick were healed and the lame leapt for joy. They were with him when the eyes of the blind were open. They were with him when they were upon Gennesaret and in, in, in that boat and, and, and in the storm. They were right there fearful that their lives would have come to an end. They stood there and they looked at him, raised his hand to the winds and the waves and said, peace be still. They were with him, I say this afternoon, when, when the woman whose son, only son was dead and he stopped the funeral train and, 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 and took the boy by the hand and brought him back to life and gave that boy to his mother. They were with him in ministry. And so they understood very well that his leaving, his parting, will somehow be an end to their ministry. You see, when we lose loved ones, there's a gap that remains. There's a void that's created. And Jesus understood well that he needed to give them something to hold on to. And that which Jesus gave them to hold on to was hope. Hope springs eternal in the desert. Yes! Jesus was telling them that in a few days it will be bad. In a few days things are going to get terrible for you. In a few days you're going to see me going through the whole agony of death. You're going to flee some of you. Some of you are going to deny me. Yes, you're going to see them put me in a tomb. But don't worry. Just remember that as long as you have hope in Jesus, that will lift your spirit. It's one thing to be in a hole in the dark. But when we understand that the sun will rise in the morning, when we understand that day will break, yeah. that gives hope yes, sir. that the night will not be long. Be long. But there's going to be a morning. Yeah. And that morning, the sun will break through. Yeah. The sun will rise in the morning. Yeah. Life will not just be the same. Things are going to change. Yes, today is bad. But hope tells me that tomorrow is going to be better. That's what hope does for us. And for the Christians, these disciples, when all would have been gone and everything comes crashing to the ground, Jesus said, listen, remember that I am going to come again and I'm going to take you home. Let me just do some work with you here. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Don't mourn and cry as though life has come to an end. No, because hear me, Jesus said, you believe in God, believe also in me. Pause a little bit. Let me just open this a bit for you. You see, the Greek believe that Jesus wrote here is the active form of the verb. Okay. There's a difference between knowledge and belief. Yeah. Knowledge you get, you read and you get knowledge. But whether you believe it or not, time will tell. Yeah. What you believe in, you act upon. Yeah. What you know, you will just want to treat it as knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge. This belief that Jesus said here, Jesus used the active form of the verb. In other words, in other words, you have knowledge, 
But then you must act on the knowledge you have. The active form of the verb. So those who Jesus promised that he was going to come and take home are those who believe and act. Hence the Bible says, hence the Bible says that not all that call unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom. But those who believe and act on the belief, those who do the will of the Father, they're the ones who are going to be saved. That's the active belief. So when God would have revealed his truth as to what is required so that I can make it to the kingdom of God, that I practice it, so to speak. That I cooperate with what God says. And so there's an active belief. And so, and so Jesus says, he who believes and do. Hence the Bible says, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and enter through the gates into the city. And I want to declare to all of us today that to know about the Lord is not good enough for heaven. But rather Jesus says, you know and you do. Yeah. In my father's house, says the Lord, are many mansions. And Jesus wanted to let them understand that when you believe, when you sacrifice and serve the Lord, it's not in vain. You may not get all of the rewards here. But in heaven, it's going to be sure. Yeah. I may not be even recognized for my service here. But my service is not unto man. My service is unto God. Lord. That my reward, hello somebody. My reward when I actively believe and practice what God has made known to me. That my reward is not here. My reward is in heaven, so to speak. And so I don't care whether you embrace it or not. I serve the Lord. The Lord is the one who recompenses yes. my labor. That's true, preacher. It's God who does. And that is why we need to understand that when we are at church, that we serve the Lord and not the church. Because at the end of the day, Jesus says, I have gone to prepare a mansion for you. Yeah. That's going to be your reward. And if it were not so, he said, I would have told you. In other words, it's true. Take it to the bank that I'm coming again. Yeah. For sure, I'm coming again. Let me hear none before I close this service. Hear Jesus. He said, If I go and prepare a place for you, then I'm going to come again. I will come again. I'm going to come again. I'm going to come again. And I remembered while being in school. A few decades ago, that my English teacher taught me that if is a conditional clause. All right. So that what comes after the if depends on what happens before the if. Are you with me now? Yeah. Let me make it simple. If you do well in school, you'll get a gift. As parents, we tell our children, if you do this, then that's going to be your reward. And so if they don't do it, does the reward come? It doesn't come. Why? Because what comes before the if was not fulfilled was not done. So it's conditional. It's conditional. Jesus said, if I go, I will come. 
And the question we need to ask today is, did he go? Did he go? And I have some witnesses. In the book of Acts chapter 1, there were some men who gathered with him on the Mount of Olives. And they stood there and suddenly they saw their master began to ascend when gravity had no hold on him anymore. He began to ascend up to heaven and, uh, and, and, and the cloud received him. And when they looked around, they saw two men. Angels came by and asked them, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who is taken from you, you're going to see him come back. Same Jesus. And I said this afternoon that I've got some witnesses that he has gone. And because it's recorded that he has gone, I can put my pot on the fire. I can bet my bottom dollar that if seeing that the first part was fulfilled, I have guarantee that the second aspect of it will be fulfilled. Jesus will come. But when will he come? I don't know. The disciples ask him in Matthew chapter 24. When shall these things be? And what are the signs? And their list. Do some Bible reading when you get home. Can't teach you everything. Go chapter 24. There shall be wars and rumors of wars. Are you with me today? They shall be earthquakes. They shall be pestilence. Huh? Visited someone this morning who told me that her father was in hospital and they tested him and they said he still has COVID. Pestilence. Crimes. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. Gays and homosexuals now want right like heterosexuals. As though they're straight and right. God created a man for a woman. And folks are saying no. They're doing that which is anti-God and immoral. And hello, some of them have legal rights to do the immoral stuff. That's where we have come to. The days of Noah. And we've gotten to a place where society has broken down. And folks are wondering to know what next. These are not just events. These are signs of the times. And what these are telling us is that Jesus is coming soon. This world cannot continue the way it is. The the world does not have the answers to the problems. Politicians doesn't have it. The economists doesn't have it. Other folks, scientists and others who are looking for all kinds of answers, they don't have it. As a matter of fact, the harder they try, the more problems they create. They don't have the answer because prophecy is being fulfilled. And what should be our response? I declare today that we should lift our heads towards heaven. From whence cometh our help. We should, we, should, we should take a cue and understand that the signs are there. The events are not just events. The events are a message to us. That Jesus is coming soon. And as I wind this down. Jesus is saying that I'm coming to take you home. This world is not our home. Heaven is our home. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. And I tell folks, take out world and put my name right in there. That God loves me. Alfred Joseph. That God loves you. Marius is a door that God loves me, Roland Dola. And put your name right in there. Yeah. T- 
to put, put my name that God loves me and God loved me enough that he gave his only begotten son to come down for hell or somebody to give up heaven and to come down and walk the dusty streets of Palestine and give his life on the cruel cross of Calvary. And when Jesus died on Calvary's cross, he died not for the sins of the world, but he died for my sins. And so I can go boldly to God, surrender my life to him, and I can claim him as my savior, and hold on to God, and get cleansing from him. And as I'm being cleansed by him, he changes my heart. He gives me a new life. His grace is sufficient for me. And right here, my life has transformed into a new creature, a new creation. I have a new heart. I have a new desire. My desires are heavenly, if you please. And I obey God's commandments. And the things I used to do. I do them no more because I'm a citizen here and I'm a citizen there. I'm a citizen on earth, but I'm also a citizen of heaven. And because I'm a citizen of heaven, I begin to apply heaven's rules right here as I live. Because this life is but a preparation for the life that is to come. And so I want to say to us today, don't be afraid to die. Because you have no control over death. Yeah. Don't be afraid to die because you're a candidate. Because only the living shall die. <laughs> and if you want to know if you will die, Pinch yourself and feel if you feel it. If you feel it, you're alive. And you're a candidate. It's only time. So you don't need to worry if you're going to die. One of these days, Cricks or Rambali will pick you up. That's not a worry. What I need to worry about is after death what? Because I can't prevent this. But I can do something on what happens to me after I die. And so don't worry about if you're going to die. You will die because you're alive. What I need to worry about. Is after death what? Yeah. Am I going to be numbered among those who Jesus promised to, 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 to receive when he returns? When he said, let not your heart be troubled. And therefore, I need my priority now is to put my house in order because I will surely die and not live. Yeah. To put my house in order means to be prepared to meet my God. Yes. One of these days will eulogize you. And one of these days, my ministerial colleagues will eulogize me. Yes. But what should be the most important thing for us? Is how I die. Not how death comes my way, but what state I am in with my relationship with my God when I die. And that depends on the choices that I make now while I'm alive. That when I die and sleep, and because I've put my life in order, I can say to death, when death comes by, do your business. Do your business. You know, this morning I spoke to a friend that is home. Told me he 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 was he saw death when his breath almost left him, and what a struggle it had been for him. 
And it's not a nice experience, he said to me, Pastor. Not a nice experience to know that I'm going to die. And he turned to his wife and woke his wife up at 1 a.m. in the morning and told her, I'm going to die. And she said, responded to him, you're not dying. Let's pray. And they prayed about it. And he said there was a calmness that came and God took care. But then he also said to me, Pastor, I was ready to die. Yeah. Because my life is in Jesus. Amen. I've been baptized in his blood. Washed in his blood. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And therefore, I'm not afraid to die because I know if I die, I'll be in the first resurrection. And so, it's important, therefore, that I put my house in order. And one of these days, one of these days, this promise made by the Lord... The promise given by Jesus to his disciples will be fulfilled. I don't know when. The Bible didn't tell us when. Jesus said the day and the hour knoweth no man. But all the signs tell us that Jesus is coming soon. And soon and very soon, our inspiration tells us that there's going to be a hand, in the, a, a small cloud in the east. That looks like the size of a man's hand. And as it gets closer, it gets bigger. And it gets brighter. And those who look up to the east will ask, what strange phenomenon is this? And those who know will say, ah, it is my Lord. It is my Savior for whom I lived. To whom I prayed. Who I served. It's my God. And he's coming to save me. And Paul in Corinthians, in Thessalonians, picks that up. He says, that the trumpet will sound. Jesus himself will descend from heaven with a voice, with a trumpet, and with the voice of the archangel. And the dead who died actively believing in Jesus will be raised. And we who are alive, said Paul, will be caught up to be with him in the air. And we shall go home to, the cease to live with God through the ceaseless ages of eternity in the very presence of God. What a day that will be Amen. when my Jesus shall come and I shall go to heaven, Paul John says, where there will be no more pain, no more crying, no more dying, cricks and rambalis out of business. Because we shall not die anymore. We shall live in the presence of God. I want to challenge you today to take serious being ready for Jesus. Because all you work for in this life will be left behind. The house, the car. The money in the bank. Hello, somebody. They're going to be all be left. The only thing you carry when you go is your character and your relationship that you built with the God of heaven while you were alive. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. Now I challenge all of you today in the presence of death. Live for Jesus. Yeah. Invest where it matters. Invest in eternity. Give God your life. And let God give you eternal life. God bless everybody. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. Um, at this moment, I will ask the witnesses Yolanda Simon, VKC Foman, Gian Inglis, and Rufus Jebatis to meet with Pastor Joseph to my left, your right, in the vestry, so you can sign the register. While that is being done, we'll call on Sister Marie Dubois as she blesses our heart with a special song. Um, again, Yolanda Simon, VKC Furman, 
Gian Inglis, Rufus Jebatis. Good afternoon, everyone. Shall we all stand, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, shall we stand? And at this time, we will do a special prayer for the family members. And so, even while I pray through this mic, um, in your hearts, lift up the family members to God and pray that God's Holy Spirit will bring comfort to them in this time time of need. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Our gracious, loving, heavenly Father, 
Thank you so very much for the privilege of prayer. Thank you so very much for the opportunity that you've given to us to access your throne of grace. This afternoon, the Lord, we have come and indeed our souls have been watered by such a refreshing message from your servant. A message of hope. A message that indicates to us that you are not slack concerning your promise. That you who have said that you've gone, you will come again to receive us. And so the Lord, even whilst we tarry upon this earth, we will experience pain and suffering. We will experience the sting of death. But Lord, you have promised us that you will never leave us alone. When you ascended, you left with us your Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the one who will show us all things, the one who will be with us even in this time of need. And so Holy Spirit, I ask in a very special way that you will come by here in a very special way and minister to the family of Mr. Wilfred. Minister in a very special way to the children, to the siblings, the nieces and nephews, the friends, the loved ones. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will bring comfort. You will bring strength to them. And even as they go back to their homes and they will spend the rest of their lives without Mr. Wilfred, may your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, bring to their memories the fun times, the wonderful times, the wonderful moments that they shared with him. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will be with them in their going out. They're coming in, they're down sitting, they're uprising. You have promised never to leave us alone. And so, Holy Spirit, we entrust all these uh, family members into your care. They are under your control. They are under your care. This is the best place that they can be. And so, Father, we ask that you will be with them, sustain them, provide for them as they lean upon you. We thank you for your promise to be with them and to sustain them. Nous commandons aux siens pour habiter et puis ses familles. By your force, by your courage, by your besoin, que vous continuez à vivre la vie. Fait yo change tout ces bon temps yo tenir avec Mister Wilfred. Et que de yo pas de temps yo qu'à vivre. Espoir deuxième vénissement kai a poumiement en la vie yo. Bless your people once again. And I pray that all of us will look forward to your soon second coming as we make the preparations now. We pray, we thank you. In Jesus' wonderful name, let the people say, Amen and Amen. Kindly be seated. Kindly be seated. I call at this moment to do the vote of thanks, Claudette Wilfred. Good afternoon once again. An anonymous writer said, death leaves a heartache no one can heal and love leaves a memory no one can steal. On behalf of my entire family, we would like to express our heartfelt thanks to all of you who have joined us here today to show your support during this difficult time. Your presence, kind words, Gratitude of sympathy and support have meant more than we can express. We appreciate the love and compassion that you have shown and are grateful for the many ways in which you have helped us to remember and honor our loved one. We are deeply touched by the outpouring of condolences from relatives, friends, and well-wishers. 
we wish to express our gratitude to the pastor as well as the members of the Balata Seventh-day Adventist Church for leading the funeral service and providing comfort and solace to our family during our time of mourning. We are also grateful to the pallbearers who will assist in carrying Toto to his final resting place and to the choir for the beautiful musical renditions. To my family members, may we all continue to draw comfort and strength from each other as the good Lord gives us the courage to face the days ahead. Once again, I thank you. Thank you. I will ask you to stand with me as you do final prayer and we get ready for the recessional. Father God, again we present ourselves before you that you may be with us to comfort and to strengthen. I pray that you may go with the family again. I pray also, Father, that as we transition from here um, to the burial ground that you will hold up the weather because I recognize it has been raining intermittently. So please, O oh Lord, hold back the rains so that we can complete this service today. And O oh Lord, at the end, help us so that we can truly commit ourselves to you, I pray, in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. All right. Um, to remain Sunday, our recessional hymn will be Glimpse of the Golden Morning in your leaflet, uh, 205. I'm going to call on the Paul Bearers now. And um, the platform personnel will lead followed by the casket, the family members, and then the rest of us um, will go. So 2.05, Glimpse of the Golden Morning, will be our recessional, Paul Bearers. The
Every kind of friend. Every kind of friend. Every kind of friend. our dear brother Joseph Wilfred to fall asleep. We do oh, now God. tenderly commit his body to the ground, hey. dust to dust, ash to ash, <laughs> in hope of a joyful resurrection <laughs> when the Lord himself shall return. And this body of our, our humiliation shall be changed and made like unto his glorious body. Until then, may the Lord watch between us and his remains until Jesus shall come. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for the life which you have blessed Joseph. And in your divine wisdom and love for him, we have seen it fit to have him sleep. Lord, we have committed his body and his remains to you. His family members, his loved ones, and his remains until that great resurrection morning. Keep us faithful. Keep us true. And oh God, we pray that your grace will be sufficient for them in this time of mourning. In Jesus' name.